One of the things that you were saying is that you feel like happiness is something that you can learn and then you can teach yourself to be happy even just by adopting the mindset that you are a happy person and proclaiming that to your friends. And so you've sort of developed a social contract. I'm a happy person. And then, well, I have to live up to that. <laughs> yeah, there, I've got hundreds of techniques. Uh, but the How did you develop that one? I, well, there's just a there's social consistency, right? Humans have a need to be highly consistent with their past pronouncements. Mm. So the way I started my first tech company was I was in a in working inside a larger organization and I told everybody that I was going to go start a company. I was like, I hate this place. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to be a successful entrepreneur. 6 months pass, 9 months pass, then people start getting, you're still here? I thought you were going to go start a company. What's, mm. what, are you are, were yeah. you lying? Right? right? That was the implication. So we kind of know this, right? Social contracts are very powerful. Like if you want to give up drinking, right? And you're not serious about it. You'll say, I'm going to cut back. I'm going to have only one drink a night. I'm going to only drink on weekends. You tell yourself. But if you're serious, you'll announce it on Facebook. You'll tell mm. all your friends. You'll tell your wife. You'll say, I'm done drinking. I'm throwing everything out of the house. You'll never see me drink again. When you say that, you know you're serious. So I think a lot of these are choices that we make. And happiness is just one of those choices. Uh, and this is unpopular to say because there are people who are actually depressed, you know, chemically or what have you. And there are people who don't believe that it's possible because then it creates a responsibility on them. It says, oh, now if I'm, you're saying if I'm not happy, that's my fault. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that just like fitness can be a choice, health can be a choice, nutrition can be a choice, working hard and making money can be a choice, happiness is also a choice. If you're so smart, how come you aren't happy? How come mm. you haven't figured that out? That's my challenge to all the people who think they're so smart and so capable. If you're so smart and capable, why can't you change this? Mm. There are a bunch of people, though, that actually take pleasure in being miserable. There, there's something about the pursuit of excellence and of success that supersedes all other pursuits. That in, in their eyes, it, it is, it is the, the peak, the pinnacle, the most important thing. It's not a trade-off. Hmm. I would argue that if, now when I say happy, uh, happy is one of those words that means a zillion different things. Right. It's like love, right? What does mm -hmm. that mean? Right, I love I'm, cheese. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. define it a little bit more tightly. Right, so uh, let's go back to desire, right? This is old, old Buddhist wisdom. I'm not saying anything original, but desire to me is a contract that you make with yourself to be unhappy until you get what you want, mm. okay? And I keep that in front of mind. So when I'm unhappy about something, I look for what is the underlying desire that I have that's not being fulfilled. It's okay to have desires. You're a biological creature. You're put on this earth. You have to do something. You have to have desires. You have a mission. But don't have too many. Don't pick them up unconsciously. Don't pick them up randomly. Don't have thousands of them. My coffee is too cold. It doesn't taste quite right. I'm not sitting perfectly. Oh, I wish it were warmer. Uh, you know, oh, my dog, you know, pooped in the lawn. I didn't like that. Whatever it is. Pick your one overwhelming desire. And it's okay to suffer over that one. But on all the others, you want to let them go so you can be calm and peaceful and relaxed. And then you'll perform a better job. Mm. Most people, when you're unhappy, like a depressed person, it's not that they have a very clear, calm mind. They're too busy in their mind. Their sense of self is too strong. They're sitting indoors all the time. Their mind's working, working, working. They're thinking too much. Well, if you want to be a high-performance athlete, how good of an athlete are you going to be if you're always having epileptic seizures, if you're always like twitching and running around and like jumping and your, your, your limbs are flailing out of control? The same way, if you want to be effective in business, you need a clear, calm, cool, collected mind. Warren Buffett plays bridge all day long and goes for a walk in the sun. He doesn't sit around like constantly loading his brain with nonstop information and, 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 and getting worked up about every little thing. We live in an age of infinite leverage. What I mean by that is that your actions can be multiplied a thousand fold, either by broadcasting at a podcast or by investing capital or by having people work for you or by writing code. So because of that, the impacts of good decision making are much higher than they used to be because now you can influence thousands or millions of people through your decisions or your code. So a clear mind leads to better judgment, leads to better outcome. So a happy, calm, peaceful person will make better decisions and have better outcomes. So if you want to operate at peak performance, you have to learn how to tame your mind, just like you have to learn how to tame your body. 
I love what you're saying. Um, Warren Buffett might not be the best example because he drinks like I think six Coca Colas a day and he eats mostly McDonald's. And he's still alive somehow. It's so amazing. that shows you that low stress is more. Yeah, but he looks like shit. Like how old is he? <laughs> I mean, he's, he's a fairly old man, Well, right? Charlie Munger is, I think, in his 90s, right? Yeah. He's made it really far. I wonder what Warren's doing. You know, I mean, just he's got to know that's bad for him. But it's he, terrible. he doesn't care. He doesn't care. I think he's just low stress. Yes. Stress is the big kid. Right. So he just enjoys that Coca-Cola. Yeah. And that's pro- maybe there is a trade-off, right? Like maybe him enjoying that junk food and that Coke, just, ah. Huh. That, that pleasing of the mind is maybe better than him just eating wheatgrass shots and yeah and be kale miserable. salads and yeah. just being uh, yeah just super I, worked up about everything it's like if you need your glass of red wine to de-stress and calm down that's probably better than you flying off the rails right right and i think that that's applicable not just in business but in probably any pursuit and i like what you're saying about allow that one thing to be your obsession but everything else just you know learn how to yeah. learn how to let things go pick your battles